on and I said, okay, it's my turn. Can I please go finish my two-year degree? And our kids were like two and a half and like nine months or something like that. So it took me until 1996 to finish my two-year degree. And then from then until 2009, I tried to go back to school five different times, but I, I kept growing in my career and the kids kept getting busier with activities. So I chose to put my family first and delay my schooling for later. Uh, because working full time as a work as a full time working mom, you're already away from home, away from your kids. So I said, okay, I'll put my dream of my college degree for later. So in 2005, which is when I was starting the bank, was the last time I was enrolled in school, and I had to drop it because starting a bank is like, oh my gosh, how do you start a bank? I'm like, okay, we'll figure it out. Anyways, so here we are nine years later. But so then I told my husband, I said, okay, I won't bug you anymore about school but I will go back when both of our kids go to college. So the three of us are gonna go to college. And how things happened that both of our kids ended up going to St. Thomas. So I got to enjoy St. Thomas, going to visit them for any excuse every week. <laughs> so I got to enjoy the campus after all. And so in the fall of 2009, my, our daughter was going to third year, our son was a freshman, and I started a two-year program with Bethel. And so 2011 comes, which is time for graduation, and graduation ceremonies are in May, and then I find out that my daughter's graduation ceremony was the same day as mine. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. I have waited so long, there's no way I'm not walking down the aisle with my little cap and gown with my friends. So then I'm like, okay, Nicole is her name. I'm like, what if I find out there are, there are different times? Would that be okay that we share graduation day? Because you know, that's a super special day. So she's like, oh, mama, that's okay. She still calls me mama. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so May 21st, 2011, she graduated at 2 p.m. and I graduated at 7.30 p.m. So my parents got to see their daughter and granddaughter graduate the same day from college. So, thank you. I just think it's such a fun story because I, those are the little things that only God can graduated from with my daughter on the same day so uh, I am just so thankful for that so now I call it my 27 year degree <laughs> so anyways the fourth thing that I wanted the reason why I wanted to share is because I want to encourage other people to help others uh, whether they're immigrants or not I think that um, you know, and I think Miguel, Miguel, you were talking about it, you know, I think we're all brothers and sisters kind of thing, and we're all here to help people. You just have to find your niche. Do you want to help the little people, the big people, the older people, you know, so just help others, and I want to encourage people to do that. I had a couple of people in my life that have really helped me. Uh, one of them, he's not here, he couldn't be here, uh, Reed Evenson, he was uh, um, my boss. He hired me from the teller line to work for him in cash management at Market Banks and we worked together like six or seven years, and then after that a merger happened, and we had to split, but then we got together again in a different bank, and he introduced me to another great mentor of mine, Jean Crane, who's now a uh, Bremer uh, president um, here in the Twin Cities, and she gave me other opportunities. She was the first one who hired me as a branch manager without any supervisory experience. She saw the leadership abilities that I had, and she gave me that great opportunity, and I'll never forget that. So, and then the bank that I'm, I'm with now, uh, they helped me with not only financially through the tuition reimbursement for school, for the four-year degree to finish that, but also I just finished um, the Graduate School of Banking in Madison, Wisconsin, and I just graduated from that in August 15th. So, when you find people that help you, you know, that's awesome, but you need to move, uh, pay it forward and help others. And of course, last but not least, as far as people in my life is my husband, who's here, Thank you for marrying me, honey. <laughs> he believed with me. He fell in love with me. This little Nicaraguan girl that came here with nothing except an accent, you know. I had nothing to offer, but he, he fell in love with me and we got married. And it's funny when after two years of marriage, you have to go to immigration. I was like very pregnant with number two. And, and I'm like, yeah, we're still married, trust me, you know. Um, because you do have to fill out papers and do it all right. You know, you have to do things the right way. So, and I just told him the other day, I'm like, honey, if I met you today, I would still pick you. So, and he liked that. So, anyways, I'm just thankful to God for so many things that he's given me. And I think that there, there's something, several things that uh, 
all of us immigrants share. And I think one of them, for example, is we need to be survivors. No matter what life throws at us, we have to get through it. And life is not fair, and bad things do happen to good people. That's life. And um, I think that we need to be survivors. The other thing is we need to have a strong faith uh, to, to get us through things. I believe in God, and I owe it all to Him. God is the one who has gotten me through so much in my life, and that's why I'm here. The next thing is that I think that we all need a strong family and strong family ties. And I tell you, my family stuck together through the earthquake that happened in Nicaragua in 1972, then the war, 78, 79, then we moved to Dominican Republic, and three months later, the hurricane of the century came to the island and destroyed it, and we had to go through that as well. And then we were refugees in Dominican, and then when we came here, we still are stuck together. We have a very close family. And if there is one thing that America needs, is close families. Uh, and that's something that I believe immigrants can bring to the table and, and show us an example. And then also we need people that believe in us. And regardless of where we're from, I, I think we all believe uh, we need that. So I find that immigrants, all of us have, most of us have all of these things in common. I think that we share that. We are hardworking people, we're strong people, and I believe that we are survivors. So I want to leave you with three things <clears throat> uh, that to inspire you, motivate you, <coughs> and encourage you going forward. Number one, be visible. People need to know you. America needs to know your story. Uh, we, they need to know that we immigrants, we are valuable, that we contribute to society to make America a better place, that we are important because of what we bring to 